The movie revolves around a middle-aged man named Robert McCall. He always gets up early to go to work at Home Mart. He has an OCD that makes him time everything he does, from getting ready for work to just washing the dishes. McCall is respected and well-liked amongst his co-workers. However, no one at work knows about his past. He always jokes that he was a pip with Gladys Knight doing a little dance for them. McCall has a friend at work called Ralphie, whom he's in the process of helping lose weight. He keeps a close eye on Ralphie's lunch and motivates him when he comes close to giving up. Ralphie is aspiring to become a security guard, so McCall always tells him to aim for progress, not perfection. At night, McCall goes to a local 24-7 diner where he reads books and drinks tea. There, he always encounters a fellow patron who's a young escort named Alina. Due to their multiple encounters, the two have become friends. Alina likes to sing, and McCall always encourages her to pursue music more seriously. One night, a limo pulls up at the diner, and Alina gets a call from her pimp, Slavi, who tells her she has to serve the man in the limo. Panicking, Alina asserts that she doesn't want to work with this client because she finds him disgusting, but Slavi ignores her feelings and tells her to go to work. When the car door opens, an obese man appears, and Alina reluctantly goes outside and joins him. The next night, McCall again meets Alina, who has a bruise on her face. He gives her a donut, and she hands him a CD that she recorded of herself singing. As they get to talking, we get to know that McCall has lost his wife. After a while, the two proceed to leave the place. Outside, the pimp Slavi again pulls up and slaps Alina. It turns out she punched the obese man from the other night, which caused an argument. McCall considers helping Alina, but she urges him to go about his way. Before leaving, Slavi hands McCall his business card, suggesting he pick another girl. Several days pass by. One night, McCall learns that Alina is in the ICU after being beaten up badly. He rushes to the hospital, where he meets her friend Mandy. McCall introduces himself, and Mandy reveals that Slavi hit Alina badly to make an example out of her. She further mentions that Slavi treats his girls like merchandise and nothing more. Fed up, McCall decides to take matters into his own hands. He meets Slavi and offers him an envelope containing $9,800 in exchange for Alina's freedom. The goons laugh at McCall, and Slavi explains that he makes so much money off Alina that $9,800 could only buy her one month of freedom. McCall considers leaving, but then decides to stay and locks the door to the room. After carefully observing the men and their weapons, he sets the timer on his watch and moves into action. Lo and behold, McCall effortlessly takes out Slavi and his goons. At home, he cleans himself up and sleeps all night peacefully, something which he hasn't done in months. Following the murders, a Russian mobster named Teddy arrives in Boston to investigate what happened to Slavi and his men. He teams up with a group of corrupt cops to gain leads. So far, everything points to a gang hit from a rival mob. Meanwhile, Ralphie quits his job to help his mother with her restaurant that got burned down, supposedly by accident. One of Teddy's paid cops, Frank Master, takes him to the workplace of a gangster named John Looney to continue his search for the killer. John insults Teddy and all Russians in general. Enraged, Teddy hits John with an ashtray while Frank kills the other goons. Teddy continues to beat John's face in until the man goes unconscious. Meanwhile, the other two dirty cops, Ramar and Peterson, extort Ralphie's mother for protection money and tell her that there will be another accident if the money isn't on time again next week. Outside, they encounter McCall, who plays a video he took of them extorting a convenience store clerk, during which they confess to starting the fire at the restaurant. McCall tells them they can either give the money back or the video will hit the news stations. The cops try to hold him at gunpoint, but McCall quickly overpowers them and beats them up. Left with no choice, the cops comply and later return the money to Ralphie's mother. Soon after, Ralphie passes his test and becomes a security guard. Meanwhile, Teddy finds out about Alina missing from Slavi's girls and questions Mandy. The latter tells him that she didn't really know her that well. 
but Teddy finds out that she's lying and intimidates her into revealing everything. Left with no choice, Mandy tells him about the night she visited Alina at the hospital and meeting an unknown but kind black man who also came by and inquired about her. After getting the information out of her, Teddy strangles her to death for lying earlier. With the new information, Teddy finds video evidence of McCall going into the restaurant, but none of him ever leaving. Pretending to be a detective, he visits McCall at his apartment. The latter sees through him right away, but still answers his questions. Teddy ultimately leaves feeling McCall is a lot more than he lets on. In the next scene, Teddy tries to obtain some more information about McCall, only to find a clean record with no trace that he has any involvement with Slavi's death. Teddy gets the feeling that everything they know about McCall is just made-up information. Hence, he and his men decide to ambush McCall outside his favorite diner. Teddy also plants one of his men inside the diner, but McCall spots him right away and calls him out. Left with no choice, the man pulls out a gun and walks over to him. Suddenly, a truck pulls up in front of the diner, blocking Teddy's view. Taking advantage of the distraction, McCall kills the man by breaking his neck. He then walks out of the diner and snaps photos of Teddy and his men before fleeing. After reaching home, McCall boils some honey to tend to a wound, and right then, the angry gangsters silently arrive outside. They then burst into his apartment, but to their disbelief, it's the wrong one. It turns out McCall is actually in another apartment nearby, watching them with hidden cameras. McCall has planted evidence in his apartment suggesting that he is leaving town. However, Teddy doesn't buy it and feels that something is off. In the next scene, McCall does leave town, but only to visit his old friends, Brian and Susan Plummer. It's revealed that McCall and his friends used to work for the CIA. McCall seeks Susan's help in finding out information about Teddy. As she gathers information, the boys talk about McCall's car bomb accident that had everyone believe he was dead. Brian mentions that somehow Susan knew McCall wasn't truly dead. It turns out McCall abruptly decided to leave his life at the CIA behind after his wife Vivian passed away. When Susan returns, she tells McCall that the men he killed were part of the Russian mafia led by Vladimir Pushkin. Teddy, whose real name is Nikolai, is the man Pushkin sends when something needs to be dealt with. Ramar and Peterson were also on Pushkin's payroll. They were found dead a few days earlier with their testicles shot off and shoved into their mouths. Susan warns McCall that Teddy and his men won't stop until he and everyone he cares about is dead. McCall explains that he's helping Alina because his late wife Vivian always liked helping people in need. The next morning, McCall leaves to finish what he started. At first, he finds Frank Masters and traps him in his car, which he's rigged with a hose from the tailpipe. He commands Frank to give him useful information about Pushkin's operations, or he'll leave him in the car to die. Frank eventually relents and takes McCall to a warehouse where the Russians count and stash huge pallets full of money. McCall forcibly persuades the gangsters to surrender and ties them up in a room with all the money for the cops to find. He then frees all the workers and gives them a departing bonus out of Pushkin's money. Frank also directs McCall to a safety deposit box where he has stashed more information detailing Pushkin's operations and revealing everyone currently on his payroll, including cops, deputies, politicians, and so on. Before leaving, McCall ties Frank to a pole and calls for help. When the police arrive, they find the gangsters, the money, and arrest Frank. Meanwhile, Teddy calls in a team of assassins from Russia to help him track down and kill McCall. As he's having dinner with them, the team leader goes to the bathroom. A few moments later, McCall comes out of the same bathroom with the team leader's bloody sunglasses. He then sits down with Teddy and offers him one last chance to stop everything before he takes out the entire organization. However, Teddy refuses the offer and arrogantly lets McCall know that he isn't afraid of him. After leaving, McCall sends all the information he retrieved from Frank's pen drive anonymously to the detective in charge of the warehouse bust. He finds one of Pushkin's oil tankers and blows it up along with several trucks and a warehouse. The incident grabs the attention of Pushkin, and he warns Teddy to take care of McCall swiftly. 
After a lot of effort, Teddy finds a picture of Robert with Ralphie and finally feels he has found a pressure point on McCall. His men take Ralphie and other Home Mart employees hostage and blackmail McCall into meeting Teddy. Later, Teddy tracks McCall's cell phone and awaits his arrival at the oil terminal. But when he doesn't show up, the henchmen at Home Mart prepare to execute one of the workers. However, in the nick of time, McCall lures the mobsters away from the hostages and kills them one by one. Teddy and his other men arrive at the Home Mart and try to find McCall. However, the CIA agent takes them out steadily. He wounds himself in the process, but this is not enough to slow him down. After a while, Teddy manages to take Ralphie hostage, forcing McCall to shoot him dead with a stud ram set gun. Three days later, McCall shows up in Pushkin's bathroom while he's showering in his Moscow home. McCall turns the lights on and off repeatedly and runs the sink water until it overflows. Pushkin talks to him for a few minutes before McCall disappears again. Scared, Pushkin retrieves his weapon by the sink and calls for his guards, only to realize that McCall has cut the electrical wires and left them exposed on the floor. Soon, he's electrocuted and killed by a live wire. As McCall leaves the mansion, he passes numerous dead bodies, revealing he's killed all of Pushkin's men. The movie then fast forwards by a few months. One day, McCall is approached by Alina, who's recovering from her injuries. She tells him she's gotten a real job and has started to do some reading. She also reveals she found an envelope with almost $10,000 inside, with her stuff when she left the hospital. Alina then thanks McCall for what he did, implying she somehow knows he's the one that got her free. In the final scene, we get to know that McCall has resumed his quiet life, but now he's found himself a new purpose. He has created an ad for people feeling trapped with all odds against them and no exit. One night at the diner, he receives a message asking for help. He simply replies, yes. <laughs>